Greetings YouTube and welcome to the blue corner and to the debut of one of the new segments I was talking about on my 1500 subscriber special and that was doing card fed area games where I take a look at new decks or interesting deck concepts that have popped up and play out some games with re and then go over the replays with commentary and the first one we'll be doing this with will be Kagro because set 7 came out, Kagro got some new support, in particular some really good G guards and an Overlord deck top that I wanted to take a look at and that it's a very hard anti-meta build. And the reason for that, we'll get into it in a bit, but first off I'll just quickly go over the lineup. So triggers are all Flame Dragons, so they're searchable off the Legend. And I see my mouse is going to be very difficult today, so we'll quickly switch over to the play of the section where I'm running once a breeze just to punish grade locking. Then moving back over here for the great ones, we have our four PGGs, three stride fighters, because this runs nine overlords. No, it runs eight overlords, but you see enough overlords to be fine with that. Four PGGs, three Conroe, because I needed to make room for four copies of Belog. So Belog is a unit that is a promo card from a while ago. His effect is GB1. When you place this guy on Guardian Circle, you can choose one of your vanguards, and it gets a new ability of until the end of the battle. At the end of this unit was attacked, and if the attacker did not hit, you choose one of your opponent's rested rear guards and kill it. Now, why this card was featured in this build is combined with your G Guardians making it easier to block Vanguard attacks, you can basically punish your opponent for playing certain types of combo decks by killing their rear guards before they can stand and back up with stand triggers or stand effects, which makes this very strong against Nova Grappler. You can also use this to pick off back row rear guards. But the main reason why this card was featured in this list is so that it can help trigger Hulk Roar Dragon, whose effect is kind of last two. When your opponent's rear guards put the uh, drop zone by the effect of one of your cards, you can pay the cost. If you do, you kill one of their rear guards. So, if your opponent swings with a rear guard at you, and you have a Hulk Roar in play, and you guard the attack with your on your vanguard, and the log is one of the cards you guarded with. You get to kill the rested rear guard and then have Hulk Roar Dragon kill off the other one. Hulk Roar will also trigger off of your G Guardians. But I never actually resolved this effect at all when I was playing with the deck. Every time I drew Hulk Roar, my opponent didn't get I didn't have enough counter blasts for it, or if I or there was just simply better cards to call down. It's a neat concept, and I like the fact that it basically says it very it really limits the options your opponent has during their turn but i i think just playing a more traditional overlord deck will be better then for the threes three cross three end and two legend because this deck plays super slow games will drag on long enough to the point where you will actually be legioning with the cross and doing cross shenanigans so that's why that this is in here then for the strides running four ace it's a pretty strong finisher card. Four, one desire to help proc your GB2 skill for the legend. And four, Blade Master Titan. This card, I feel, is incredibly underrated right now. As he's very simple, but he's very good at what he does. So, kind of as one, choose a GB2, choose a unit in your uh, G zone, turn to face up. And for each face up copy of this guy in your G zone, you pop one of your opponent's rear guards. And he gets the ability of when he attacks and is emblazing, he gets a crit. This is a very, very useful ability for the Kagro deck, as if your opponent is playing a deck and they choose to try and play around yours by not calling anything, you can punish them by calling this guy down, much like how Narukami can punish people for not calling units to the front row by going Conquest Dragon. So, he's very good in that regard, and I think this is going to be a 4 of just about every Kagro deck moving forward. And then as far as the rest of the units go, we have one Irresist Dragon on hit, Soul Blast 1, retire all of the units in your opponent's rear guard in a row. So he can, he's a pseudo for million, except uh, he has to hit in order to do his effect, but he doesn't cost counter blasts. And then for the G guards, one Isle Orb, who gets 5k if your opponent has four or less rear guards. Three Denial Griffin, who counter blasts 1, when it's placed on Guardian Circle, you can choose one of your opponent's rear guards that is attacking. And kill it so it's effectively a perfect guard for cb1 and this will proc hulk roar and finally one defeat flare dragon count of us one choose two great three or greater flame dragons from your drop zone and put them on the bottom of your deck in any order when your overlord is attacked by your opponent's vanguard you can pay the cost if you do you kill all the rear guards of your opponent's back row 
This is incredibly damaging against things like Saint Guard, which require to, them to have multiple grade ones. And this poops on that. This also poops on Thaba's decks if they happen to have Stasia's in the back. And he does not choose, so he gets around resist units in the back, which is rather important to have when dealing with Spyros things. So that is the deck list in a nutshell. So we'll just go take a look at the replays and see how this deck fared. All right, so the first game is going to be up against Great Nature, a deck that I'm admittedly not very familiar in playing against. Furthermore, this is one of my first games of the Kagro deck, so I know I'll make a couple gaps. But he goes first, which is fine. It means I get first stride. And what do I do? Yeah, I just I just keep swinging because my hand isn't really that good for pushing, and I don't want to use my burnout just yet. He rides his break ride, which is fine. I ride the legend. I fetch a heal trigger so my G Guardian's online, which I figure will be very helpful for when he decides to do stuff. I stride into desire. And I just swing at the vanguard. He lets it go, so I'm just going to kill a starter, which is no loss of his. He strides into his guy, and he starts doing great nature things, which I think I ended up just tuning out for a bit. I'm reading his cards and wondering what I want to do here. And ultimately what I decide to do is I decide to PGG his rear guard, because I decide I want to get the fleet player dragon off. Which completely throws him off, by the way. He's like, why would you even do that? But I'm like, it's fine, it's fine. So, I PG his guy. And then I decide to defeat Flare Dragon his back row. And while also throwing up another 10k shield so he can't really do a whole lot. He swings. And I am guarding off the rest of his axe. I use Belog to kill his rear guard off. At this point, I stride to Titan because he's got one rear guard, so I can just start pressuring with that crit. His hand's large, so I feel like the ace wasn't going to get me there. I decide to just thin my deck out, try and pull more trigs. I use Titan to clear off his rear guard, and yeah, just swing with the crit. He PGs it, which is fine. I happen to resolve two draw triggers, so I push. I decide not to attack him, though, because he needs counterblasts to work. He flips the heal trigger, though, and then I just continue to do Titan shenanigans. I want to get that hand down. At least now that I can... Uh, wait, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I just search another Overlord. I throw a Conro down so that I can unflip my damage. I forget to immediately do so. Oh, I also decided to try and go and break his 3 to pass, but silly me that never works. But yeah, I also realized, oh right, I have to unflip him for my Vanguard. He does his break right turn, which is a bit frightening, but I also happen to have at least uh, I have a Belog and a heal trigger play, so I can do stuff. So I end up deciding to go for Denial Griffin. I kill his rear guard, and he's done. So our second game is up against Angel Feather. This is actually the rescue build, and the guy I'm playing against actually knows me. His name is Kargilism, and he, he there's his channel, so I'll go ahead and check him out. And this is actually my first time playing against Rescue, so. Well, actually, no, I didn't know it was Rescue yet. I just assumed he was playing Angel Feather. Or what's that starter do? Oh, yeah. So at this point, I didn't know if he was playing Nasiel or not. I just assumed he was. But then he shows pretty quickly. No, wait, no. At this point, I'm still thinking he's playing Nasiel. So I just try and play it as follows. I get the crit because I'm amazing at this game. And then at this point, I see he's playing Rescue. He's like, oh, this is my first time playing against Rescue. Interesting. Let's see how this plays out. I end up riding the, the Legend. I think I didn't get a very good lot off of this. Yeah, I think it was either just grab a crit trigger or grab a draw trigger. And I just wanted to put the crit trigger back in deck. So I check nothing off of my check. He strides in Gavriel. He does not have stride assist, so it's the minus one stride, which is never good. But he ends up calling out a decent enough oil. Well, yeah, he gets a decent enough board. It's enough so that he can pressure me with the attacks. And he's just doing stuff with rescue. So he swings his 13. I to ball log it. Because it couldn't hit. Swings the vanguard. He flips a crit. And I say, check a draw trigger. So that's fine. I'm able to 10k his rearguard lane. He heals uh, and then deals damage. And at this point, I'm uh, debating on what I want to go into. I don't have enough rearguards to perform a decent... Well, no, wait, no. Vortex is my only play. I'm thinking about the next turn. 
So I'm just debating on what I want to flip. I end up flipping a Titan because I feel like I'm going to need to use its effect to kill more than just one thing on the following turn. PG guards with his guided deal that uses rescue, and then he throws down on more cars to two pass. I don't break it. Spoiler alert, never do. And that pretty much wraps up my turn. So going into his turn, he can definitely make a big play. He can either Raphael or Gabriel. He ends up going for Gabriel. He calls a broken heart and another one down. I'm like, oh crap, two broken hearts. But the first one I'm gonna be able to kill off with Belog. So that's one down. I know guard, no, depending if I wanna guard or not because he basically gets five checks off of this, three to hand and two into damage. So he could very well flip crits. So I decided to PG it. He does, he PGs the side and then he heals and deals two damage. And then he swings with a 31k guy, and I just denial gripping it. So I managed to do a good job of keeping his board clear. Stride into Titan, which, thanks to my uh, G Guardians, is very easy to pull off. So I swing with the extra crit. He no guards. I don't check a trigger, but I do put him at five damage. So he's forced to immediately start using his heals, and he does so by striding Raphael. Raphael's a uh, Gabriel's effect. Calls out a thing. I don't know what all these cards do. I know he has another Broken Heart out. And with the effect of Rescue, he flips a heal trigger. And then he uses Raphael to heal another card off. So he's healed two damage on this turn. And he's managed to rescue off another card. So he's got full damage. And he checks another heal trigger. So he's healed off three damage on his turn. I'm like, oh. But because I able, I still have more Titans left, I decide to strike into another one. At this point, I've got three face-up Titans in the G zone if I flip another copy, which I do. And so, so I kill off his three beer guards, including his Broken Heart. Get the extra crit. Proceed to activate Blaze, and I check a crit. So that's three damage off this attack. So he immediately goes back to five, closing the gap. On, I'm not able to do anything with the Hollow though, but he goes into another copy of Gavriel, and if you know this at this point, his deck is very, very low. Like, he's down to five cards in deck, and I don't think he caught this in time, so he also drew multiple draws, so he automatically loses by deck out, but I still decide to just play it through and see if I can actually kill him, and I don't really have a lot of I can't really use the ace though. I don't have an account of us, so it's just irresist. He PGs it and then that's it. So, uh, my quick thoughts on uh, this deck. Bushy Road probably needs to find some way to fix the deck out issue because if you go up against anything that's able to grind it, deck out is a very real possibility with rescue. All right, for the next game, we're going to be up against Angel Feather again, different player, but still roughly the same deck. It's uh, rescue featuring. Gavriel and the other guy, so no knockout shenanigans, but the very the, the threat of Drefros is still real. Also, my, my hand is not particularly that great, I might very well end up having the G-Assist, which is not particularly good against decks with high advantage, but it's fine, I draw him to the cross. I also can make sure to get in Claw's starter, swing, get a PG, so we're kind of off to a good start. He rides Broken Heart. I unfortunately don't want to, well, I don't want to guard it. I want to save my heal trigger for G-Guard. Checking the Holm, ride the cross. Not the best ride that the deck can offer, but it's still better than riding things like Dragonic Overlord, the OG. I flip a heal trigger though, so well, I'm, my skills just shine through, yeah. He rides Gavriel and he just starts doing some stuff. Uh, this calls his Glimmer Breath down. This thing is on attack call, his heal trigger shuffles itself into the deck, his stand trigger is kind of kind of a one, put it to, let's see, if it boosts, yeah, you can just uh, rescue, yeah, so, sets up his board, swings, I decide to PG it, because I don't want him calling anything particularly ridiculous off of the uh, damage zone, yeah, he would have had his, uh, he had a grade one now. Yeah. But he ends up healing it off anyway through the effect of rescue, so rip. He swings at my Nahalem, I guard it. And he swings at my Nahalem again, yeah, and I decide I'm going to G-guard it because I'm going to need it for my next turn. As I want something to pass my triggers off onto, because I know I'm going to be going to Titan. Well, no, I don't need to have Titan, but like, since I'm at GB1, my Nahalem will now be 11k, so I can just Legion it with the cross. 
and just push an 11k be sick. So I seek mate. Go get the end and fetch an end from my deck. Can't be stand, but it's still a play I can do since I can't stride. And I do. What do I debate on when I attack? I think I debate on attacking the side of the vanguard. I decided to just go straight for the vanguard. And I check nothing. Oh right, yeah, no, this is the part where I jumped ahead of the gun and decided to just check without him saying anything. So I put my cards on the bottom of my deck. He G guards. Kind of us one. Rescue. Heals the damage. So he two passes me. I don't break it. I get a heal off though. I swing at the vanguard. And he takes the hit. His turn comes and he's going I does he stride in the raft area here? I don't think he does. He does have a broken heart though. No, he just swings the vanguard by itself, and I decide to let it go. I need the counter blasts and I don't wanna I don't have a pedge yet. He gets his heal and uh, he gets his stand trigger effect off, rescues. I have a three in hand so I can stride. Pretty certain I'm gonna be going to Titan here. What did I flip up? Let's see, I use the now different. Yeah, I can either go yeah, I go to Titan because I have just one counter blasts. And this will be a good means of putting him from 3 damage to 5 if I don't flip a crit, or he dies if I do. He PGs. Blaze is active. And I check a crit, so I just swing 21 crit too. He's at 5, so he's going to have to use Raphael. Which he does. Yeah, he goes into Raphael, and he's just going to... What does he have? He has a Broken Heart? Yeah, he has a Broken Heart and Damage Zone. So he's able to drop 2 Broken Hearts this turn. He uses Rescue as well. What does he call? No. Yeah, he calls down a broken heart. And then he heals one. And he's gonna swing at me. I no guard it. He checks another heal, so for two games in a row, Angel Feathers have double healed on me. Thanks for reference Raphael and such. Swings at me for 23. And I I call it yeah, I call it Isle Orb Dragon because he has five or less regard. I mean, he has four or less regard, so I get the 21. I get the 20k guard. He uses rescue, deals himself a damage, and heals one. And at this point, yeah, I think I'm gonna be yeah, I go into Titan again. Just get that broken heart out of there. Oh no, I I also use burnout just because I needed to get a I wanted to get an overlord back in the deck, so I burn out one thing, Titan the other. And since I happen to have my Margo clone, I'm gonna use it on my burnout so that it's 12k and can swing unboosted and then use Conroe in order to inflict some damage because I have no counter blasts and I want to have counter blasts for the ace. Just depending on when I get off of the effect of my Conroe. So I swing 31 with a crit. He's got the other PG and he's able to use rescue. I hit a draw trigger, I hit a heal trigger, and I hit a Conroe. So I hit double triggers. This is okay, I mean I finally happened that there. And I swing with my rear guards. I think he debates if yeah, he's gonna G guard. And he's gonna use rescue again. He's down to 18 cards in deck going to this turn. And he's got three cards to my nine. Yeah, to my nine. So he's got some work ahead of him to try and cut through this. And what's he striding to? Oh yeah, he's striding to Gabriel. This, yeah, he's got his broken heart and damage zone. So yeah, he calls out his other broken heart. And he's got his Glimmer Breath clone, but I don't think he has the soul for it. So is he in, he's just going to call it down by itself. But Gavrielle can still boost it up with her effect, which is kind of less two. And choose a face down card and your G-Zone turn to face up and you're, you can bump up your front row. So he swings at my Nahalem. I let it go. I keep it alive. I no guard his Vanguard. He flips a crit and a heal and nothing else. I hit a crit and I hit nothing else. So it's my 16. He uses his rescue effect and his rear guard in the front and we're going to get big. He also flips a stand. He, he checks two stand triggers off of your, his rescue too. And he gets a call. So his shit is big. And I'm like, oh, I have to go to some considerable trouble to guard this. I think, you know, he calls this thing up which gains 3k if it's called from drop zone off of, if it's sent to the drop zone from the damage zone so 
He swings at me for 33, I 20k guard that, and then he swings at me for 34, and I'm denial griffining that one. So, it's another broken heart dead off of denial griffin. And on my turn, what do I go into here? My options are either the ace or a titan. And I think I go, yeah, I decide to favor, yeah, I go to titan because he's at three damage. And I don't want to ace at three damage. Or as I, Titan can at least force out a PG or put him to 5 damage or dead. And it allows me to kill his entire board, so I do that. Call down another Conroe so that I can fetch another copy of Dote in case I end up having to swing with just Dote by itself, uh, the cross by itself. Activate Blaze. He uses his G Guardian to rescue it off. Yeah, he, yeah, he activates his G Guardian. Heals off a damage. Yeah, and he also throws on another trigger for a two pass. And I contemplated because I had to draw a trigger, but ultimately I just see, proceed to not draw anything. I draw the Hulk War Dragon well after it's out, after I could have used it. He strides into Raphael here. No, no, he strides into the big guy who goes who allows you to. Oh, I don't think he uses his effect on the guy because he has no soul, but he has a Refros, and he has the potential to do the Refros Luke. And he does so. Fails to whiff it. Yeah, he whiffs the Refros, and he leaves the game. Alright, so the last game is going to be up against Dark Regulars, and it is the Blade Wayne deck. Also, something coming out of set 7, though, in my opinion, nowhere near as good as this. In fact, I don't think it's very good for even a darker regulars deck. I think Amon's probably still the stronger deck. But people will definitely try and find a way to make it work. Anyway, so I end up going second. I use Elias the Effect of Conroe to search out Overlord, to, uh, to search out the Legend, pitching the cross. And he calls down Grigards. He attacks my Conroe. I decide to guard it. He lets my Vanguard go. He attacks my Vanguard. I take it. I think I move back to Conroe. No, no, I missed fighting with this thing. So I finally draw the Hulk Roar Dragon. Turns out it's on Vanguard when Burnout would be the better play. Swing in his rear guard. He lets it go. Swing in his Vanguard. He gets a heal. And then he rides. Calls the Great Two down. He, like, it's just vanilla Vanguard at this moment because none of us are striding it. I hit a draw trigger. He attacks my rear guard. Let's see, I ride the legend, search a pedge off of it? I think I do. Yeah, I search the PGG. And I'm going to stride. Get uh, going for the desire. Use the effect of my starter in order to fetch a copy of an overlord out of the deck. And uh, yeah, I'm going to use burnout to kill off his grade two, because I'm pretty sure that is his amber clone. Or just the, like a general, it's a, oh, or is this Glimmer? I don't, it's just a very good card that I want to get rid of. He uses his G Quintet wall, forcing me to three pass. Definitely not going to break that. And I swing with my Burnout. Let's like, box it. And then this is where the game starts to get a little bit silly because he doesn't want to give me Counter Blast, knowing the, the nonsense that I can do with it. And so he decides to start swinging at my rear guards, I think, at this point. Or. I just know I end up not taking any damage for a couple turns. Oh no, he lets this, he swings the Vanguard for this one. I no guard it. He hits the stand trigger. Does nothing. I hit a heal trigger, so I go to two. I stride and go to Titan, use its effect, get the crit, call down, down in the Hollem. And we're just gonna start going in there. He no guards, hoping to god I can flip a crit, put him to four damage. I don't, he's at three. And he hits a defensive trigger, so he's able to block both my attacks off. Also, I'm memeing in there in the comments with 420 Blaze it. And then he strides into Blade Wing Pitbull, which allows him to reset his deck. But since he doesn't have 15 or more soul, he gets the Soul Charge 5 instead. Yeah, and then this is the part where I think he starts attacking my rear, is not wanting to give me counter blasts, because I can very well ace him if he does. If I, yeah. So he swings up my Nahal, I let it go. He checks a crit and a stand. And I'm like, huh, 
what do. So I guess I'll just get the cross then and just put cards back in my drop zone from the deck. And I realize, wait, my drop zone is not exactly ideal for a Legion, but we'll do it regardless. And uh, I debate if I want a Conroe here. I figure I'll just swing with this. He'll no guard it and I'll crit and put in the five. Doesn't work. And then on his turn, he has no play, so he's just going to swing at my rear guard. And at this point, I realize, well, this is how it's going to be. So at this point, I'm considerably up in advantage. He's not checking any rear guards to attack with, which is really unfortunate for him. And I just keep patrolling him. Anyway, so I fetch out another copy of the cross. I resolve Conroe's effect so that way I'll unflip two when I attack. Thus, if my cross lands, I get to restand with Dote. I decide not to use my Persona Blast and just swing with the boost Hulk or Dragon. So he's now down to two cards in hand. He is going to be striding in this turn, but he's just coming at me with a Guild of Rye and nothing else. So I can take his attack provided he doesn't double crit me. No, he would have to. Yeah, he would have to double crit because then his attack will be dealing two damage. I go to four. No, he has to. Yeah, he has to. He has to flip two crits in order to kill me. So I'm hoping to God that doesn't happen. But given my history with darker regulars, I get crit. But I don't have a hand that allows me to guard it otherwise. He doesn't crit me, so I'm able to live and go into the ace for the first time all video and use its effect. So we're gonna be getting two checks. I'm debating if I want to call down the other rear guards. I don't. So swing with the ace, check a trigger, swing with the ace again. It's a one pass. Wait, and I flip a trigger and another trigger, and there. So like the one time I stride into the ace, I check three triggers. Like the most epic of epic Kagura players. So yeah, that's the deck in a nutshell in my opinion i don't think it's necessarily better than a traditional overlord deck i think the more streamlined and consistent ones will definitely get you further but i definitely see the merits in playing this like the log interactions with your g guards is definitely a nice thing i i could see myself running two or three copies of this in the deck and then just bumping this up to another copy and if I continue to play with this overlord ratio, I probably would do it like this. Because multiple of the logs are a bit on the clumpy side. What other changes would I need to make in this deck? Uh, this, this play style definitely suits the cross more than, say, just going dote and legend. Although I like the makeup of the dote legend deck better. Hulk or Dragon... No, I... It's... This kind of build I don't think is going to catch on as well in the TCG as it did in the Japanese tournament because their 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 player style there. No, that's not what I want to say. How, how do I want to put this out? There? The best way to describe it is the type of tournament that this was played in is the kind of place where players are more conservative in how they play because they feel that so much is on the line that they can't afford to make any mess ups. And in that kind of environment where all these decks and these players play slower, the cross is able to thrive because it's playing everything is playing as its pace. Whereas here in the TCG, people are less inclined to play that way. We're more YOLO or we'll just do whatever we want to do, damn the consequences, which is where this deck will struggle. And I think in trying to translate this deck over to the TCG, going with like this lineup is probably better. As at least with Dote, if you're forced to ride it, it can at least do something. The great for all intents and purposes is basically this, and yeah, I think this is just slow. Also, I don't think there's really room for Neo Flame in the deck. Like, I like the idea of running Berserk Dragons, but then again, I've been running Berserk Dragon clones in a lot of my stuff as of late, especially since Conroe on flips. Like, let's see, we can definitely cut the Hulk Roars. We can cut the Hulk Roars for two Berserks. And we have two slots left, so we can... Actually, in those games, I noticed that I was swinging with unboosted rear guards a fair bit. So I think Burning Horn, or not Burning Horn, Burning Horn, or do they actually have this card on here? It's called Endless Flare Dragon, I believe. 
Look at this guy. This guy, I think, will be really strong. But then again, I didn't always have grade threes in my hand, so I don't know if this thing will actually be optimal. But oops, we could do that. Uh, we'll just quickly work around this. Trigger lineup, I think, is fine. Why do I have this thing highlighted in here? That's terrible. Since we cut down our grade threes, we're gonna run another copy of this. I, didn't, I don't plan on turning all these videos into me doing Death Doctors, but I've also made some tweaks to the G-Zone. Uh, let's see, this can go down to two, and I think this can go in here. I thought about this guy, but Titan more or less covers the same job that Root Flare does, but it can kill more and do more things. I admit, though, being able to nuke a column for no counter blast, especially if your opponent has like a Tom or something, or if they are playing something like Spyros and they happen to have nothing in the back row with resist so you can just get around that so there's that application but novel is also pretty strong too those would be the changes i would make to this deck moving forward and yeah this is going to cap off this introductory segment into adventures in card fight area episode one anti-defensive cogger or whatever hopefully the remaining videos in these series won't be as long that's because i had to experiment with the game length of death row replay not death row Fight area replays. This is probably going to be 25 to 30 minutes. I want to slim this down to 15, but we'll see. I have to get better at talking while replays are going on. Rip me, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, pitch any suggestions for what I can cover in future ones. I definitely want to give uh, Gold Paladins a shot now that they have their new D support as Gurgu get good, got good. And I might try Angel Feather. I don't know about Deep Police. I've never, I've never really been a Deep Police fan. Also, I'm gonna say right now that I absolutely refuse to touch Bermuda Triangle. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. I just no. I this is one clan that I just no. I I I hate them. So they'll you'll never really see Bermuda Triangle content on this channel unless it's me playing against our resident Bermuda Triangle player. But yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed this. Until next time, this is Blue Starter 9, checking out.